So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for letting us present this thought, uh, post-relation of ours towards the improvement of Enraxian. Um, so this specific talk is about, I don't know, somebody else is going to, uh, I'm not really sure. So yeah, we can start. So this talk is, uh, this specific presentation is about um, Phenraxian. Phenraxian is an is um is a donated I think source code from Mifos IO, um, which is a cloud native uh, improvement over Phenrax one point X. So to some people who do not know um, about the the fact what Phenraxian is, uh, it's it's like a side project or sub project of Phenrax 1.x. So 1.x is like a flagship project for Apache Phenrax. And today we're probably going to talk about the ideas and the possible explorations which we did towards implementing with one of my team members here. Um, so we we first we sort of like introduce the the vision and the mission of Phenraxian. So Phenraxian by the name suggests cloud native. I mean, 1.x is also cloud native in some ways, like it doesn't really have the NoSQL and some kind of other, um, you know, a new system or databases or services. So <clears throat> this is a quote, which is actually from the, the wiki page of Finrex CN. Anybody could actually go and read that. Um, so it's a system, it's a service, it's a composed service, like a bunch of service combined together, which kind of like allow the, uh, which focuses, which puts a lot of focus on performance uh, as well as scalability, because this is where uh, a lot of issues which uh, 1.x users and partners face, that the issue behind the fact that uh, it, it can it cannot scale because monolithic application has its own limitations. Definitely, it can scale in a different way. I mean, you could run a bunch of different services. You could optimize different services. You can optimize database. But in my own personal experience, I've seen these bottlenecks happening on Finrec 1.x. Now, Finrec CN promises that it needs to be ephemeral. It needs to be scalable. It needs to be agile also. And definitely, this should be the promise. This should for CN services to kind of like uh, put out. But before we actually dwell into the the whole um, uh, journey of ours with my team member here, so I'm going to give you a little bit of statistics and a little bit of background which we conducted. You, we will share this file soon on the list with uh, all of the community members. They can actually go through it. So Finrac 1.x has actually more contributions than like way over like not even two times or three times. It's like way over than that, than Finrexian combined uh, over the past uh, couple of years. Uh, the last commit I've seen was in the next, like, you know, uh, I mean, a couple of days ago. Finrexian has the last commit, I think, almost around like a year ago, almost more than a year ago. And <clears throat> the the lack of contribution, you know, is there definitely. And Phenrexian contributors are limited to only few, including Marcus Mill. I mean, there was a reputation of authors like happening when you make a look up within that specific file, which we would share to the community. So our conclusion is for the, from this, the statistics which we've derived, the architecture is quite complicated to adopt in the sense, how do we, how do we deduce this kind of statement? It's quite simple. There's less contributions happening and adoption is less. So if the technology has less contribution, it means that it's kind of hard or there is something missing, some something else, like for instance, documentation. And to be um, able to have a great open source project going on is about a lot of documentations about how other contributors or the developer could kind of so it's kind of encompasses the whole idea. So I think uh, here I would like Kevin to get into and talk about these general general steep curves which we've identified, which we've together worked on. So Kevin, over to you. Would you like to expand your thought process here on the idea that what are the curves which we've identified when we work with Finrexian?
Hello, Kevin, are you there? Sorry, yeah, I okay. forgot. Yeah, hello everyone. So basically here, I started with the uh, one point text and then the microservice architecture kind of was interesting for me. And so I jumped into FinRAC CN and I was looking, I was hoping for a lot of improvement when I started watching the project, it was having, it was having some sort of uh, like uh, domain value. It was serving some, uh, uh, some kind of functionality. And I was trying to get into the project and I was hoping that in some amount of time, over, uh, this project will get to a point where it it's as big as the FinRack C, uh, FinRack 1.x and uh, delivers all the functionality provided by FinRack 1.x. After a while, I, uh, and when I, I wanted to, uh, when I was trying to get started, the uh, condition of documentation was not that great in the beginning. And still it's not that great, but it has improved. At that point, I was uh, struggling to get the services running. And uh, if I remember it correctly, I was not able to, I was not able to run uh, this demo server, which is demo server setup, which is currently in the documentation. And I had a 16 GB, 16 GB uh, MacBook Pro. And this is something which was weird for me because I was having like, I couldn't get started with the project because uh, uh, yeah, imagine that 16 GB RAM is not, uh, uh, and uh, the performance of, of a Mac Pro is not enough to run the project. So how will the, how will the developers uh, get started with this project or uh, run this project so that they could contribute more? This was one of the, so I, uh, I, uh, tried running some services in, on the cloud and uh, just the essential services on on my uh, laptop. This is how I uh, I tried to get, get the services uh, running on cloud. And then I saw that again, there's, no, there's a lack of automation. They don't provide, uh, I didn't see any scripts or uh, simple uh, procedure through which I can get these uh, services deployed on the cloud and i ended up creating a terraform script which uh, uh, brings spins up all these instances and uh, deploys these services and this was important for me because when i'm developing and uh, when i need to see changes happening and so on i i'll make mistakes so i'll need to uh, uh, drop these instances make a uh, spin them up again and it was quite con uh, time consuming to do it all uh, by hand and then uh, this was one of the hardships i felt and with the documentation what else cassandra was then came a point where after I implemented the Terraform scripts, it was easy for me to get the services running. But then came the, uh, like, I did not like the idea of running a database in uh, on Docker containers for a production environment. So I was looking for options. When I go for a serious deployment, uh, I need to have some kind of, uh, uh, foolproof mechanism or uh, a bit more uh, stronger uh, strategy. So I tried looking for options, and I saw that most of the provide uh, most of the I came across the uh, I uh, faced a scenario where uh, this deployment of Cassandra in a production grade environment it was too pricey for my for in my case, and probably in most uh, small scale. Uh, for most of the small kit, small scale uh, deployments, it will be pretty pricey. That was another. Also, 
because of this i tried again i tried looking for options managed solutions and i came across it was the beginning where uh, amazon uh, amazon started uh, providing cassandra as a managed service and even uh, so i uh, tried adopting cassandra as a managed service from uh, offered by aws and uh, again i came into a dead end because uh, amazon doesn't uh, these managed services they do not uh, implement the api of cassandra completely and uh, finraxian was uh, using some apis which were not implemented by cassand uh, amazon and then i tried the uh, another option of azure uh, ended up the same way so i understood that either i have to either i have to modify the cassandra part to uh, use the managed services or uh, i should uh, go with the deployment of cassandra in uh, docker environment so i uh, i ended up making some changes in the cassandra part and tried to uh notify the community about it uh, and i didn't find much response i didn't get any response about uh, this and after a while i i uh, like uh, the all these hardships uh, led me to drop this idea and wait for some more improvement i i hope to find some more improvement uh, so um which i did not find so the personal experience so far like upgrading i mean i remember uh, contributing i mean thank you kevin for sharing your experience together we started out something i remember having this uh, journey with kevin and i think um there's like couple of things which i would like to point out with kevin and agreeing with kevin that it's uh, there are a couple of things the like packages which are specifically written like you know which we personally um think about the fact that why are they there i mean like you know if we have it's if this is a microservices architecture and definitely the documentation is very scarce and running phoenix in in you know uh, in cloud environment is kind of like really broken i mean definitely some people might be running it but we're not aware of that and there's no uh, giving back to the community um so the experience stems from the i remember upgrade Service as uh, similar to what Kevin trying to do. Um, and it was this. This was this was the one of uh, what you wanted to kind of like raise and come across. And I remember having these conversations um, with one of the community member that they need uh, people to upgrade the services. I mean, and I we re- this is something I've realized. This is something which we've realized that there is an automated way to upgrade these services and to manage those dependencies. Because when you're talking about the these couple services and these services are like like couple of services like it's not it's not a big application the microservices are like 10 10 different services and it's going to be a case where you have like another five other services or 15 other services how do we actually manage them and how do we upgrade them this something struck to me when i was manual upgrade with another uh, Speaking the open source enthusiast who was helping me out with that, so we tried, um, you know, a couple of services. Maybe we can put something that this is not going to work. So this came. In, and I remember we used so template is like a like a spoiler plate for a service where it doesn't do anything. It just shows you how you can actually build a Finraxian based. Uh, app or a service and we realized that it need more efforts because it requires us to do manual additions of configuration i mean it was really hard for us to kind of like um develop something on top of it because you have to like fix a couple of things before you actually do something and the most uh, disturbing part is that you have to rely on different packages kind of bunch of packages i mean and making it more dependent to each other you know rather than isolating you know like there's a bunch of things which do uh, depend on each other so as I go back to kevin and kevin could you put your own experience out here about cassandra and what in what was the blocker 
and you know as you mentioned that cassandra is a big issue when it comes to managing and maintenance and definitely it's a it's a pricey affair <clears throat> so could you could you explain could you put your uh, experience here on this uh, aspect why did we decide that cassandra is not definitely a choice to go ahead with so uh, as i have already mentioned since it was since from the beginning i was having issues with uh, cassandra and uh, having it uh, deployed and like those kind of issues i had already uh, like i was already fed up <laughs> a little bit with this and uh, when i started digging more into the um, more into the code of finraxian i understood that cassandra was mainly being used for uh, providing cqrs facilities cqrs uh, architecture and it did not do much of like much more uh, it was just used for it, it was just being used for serving commands and such stuff which is related to cqrs and later on at a stage where uh, we'll discuss it later on uh, later in the slide we replace with uh, re replace the finraxian implementation of cqrs which was actually a re uh, re which was kind of a reinventing the wheel with uh, because there were other alternatives out there uh, later on we reached a point where we could just swap out cassandra for basically for nothing we did not need cassandra anymore after a while when we uh, Uh, when we uh, started using something else for cqrs and uh, i think one less component means it it becomes easier for uh, for the developers because they don't have to learn one more component in order to get involved with the project i mean um this is something which we both have experienced you know in terms of that and i remember uh, meeting kevin in one of the chat rooms and uh, we were discussing the fact that uh, there were a couple of commands which are not going through which i sometimes see on the email that cqrs is not processing this command because it's kind of like somewhere i conclude that's not really fulfill the expectations which we were looking for so um this is where i started pouring in some ideas with kevin i started talking about the ideas you know um, if you remember kevin we had this discussion that i think what if first of all we could automate the whole process you know like where uh, we could automate managing all of the services which is missing right now for a developer to kind of like um uh, to work upon because that's one of the blocker when when you go ahead as a developer to kind of like you know uh, to put out the fact that hey i want to manage this service but the problem is that i have to manage bunch of other services how do i do this manually and the developer wouldn't do that developer would not be interested in such kind of thing uh, or any kind of partner or any kind of open source contributor such as in an institute or a company or whoever you could say so we reached out to jhipster which is a product that does automation on our behalf like it could generate an application um with existing frameworks included like using a blueprint or adding your own generator so generator does what it kind of like does what template is doing right now in finraxian so you could kind of like generate your own uh complete uh you know uh whole packaged application and you could kind of like you do an upgrade also and add more languages i mean this is what this uh, jhipster generator is doing so most of the people do not really know about jhipster we would in, uh, introduce jhipster in a couple of next slides also um and we realized that automation is the best automation is the way forward first of all to make this thing easier and uh, definitely i mean this is where we uh, uh, imp this is how we actually implemented this approach and we've helped we've taken help from a couple of apache committers who we just simply reached out to them and asked them that hey could do you want to try this approach on finraxian with they've used finraxian and we gave them this uh, this new approach and they all liked it so definitely uh, it's a best open source project available today in terms of core banking system fincen 
and people who did the, the who brought this up did a good job to kind of like create it. but i think we need to move away from this uh, the promise we need to kind of like take away the, in the in the present tense now and <clears throat> so if you want more and more people to contribute towards it we need to simplify the architecture this is what we've got to know i mean from our learnings we need to like uh, put automation in place. We need to like improve the developer. Experience. Then it becomes relevant, and then you know when then we start seeing the the contributions coming back. And to to retain its status, as lot need lot needs to be done in terms of like uh, this. So this these were the thought process which we, which we were having, and we started writing it down. Like for instance, automation of deployment and services. Uh, like as I mentioned, generators could help blueprints. So we would introduce blueprint also, and we kind of like envision that FinCEN is able to match FinRec 1.x, and then 1.x is kind of like or whatever the version is going to be of FinRec, the monolithic. So when we mention 1.x, we're talking about monolithic version of uh, um, you know, um, and. Uh, in terms of functionality when we're talking about and this is something not really hard to achieve but with the current rate which the project is being developed and as a couple of other community members on the list mentioning that might be a possibility that it can never reach that status also so we kind of like figure out uh you know we need to kind of like attract you know the so i think uh we've replaced a couple of things on on from the core architecture, the way we look. And I think Kevin could give us a little bit of insight uh, that what did we actually replace? You know, where, where did we start when we look at the FinRex, FinCN services? So, and I think Kevin has been mentioning a lot about reinventing the wheel that, you know, there were a bunch of services which we could have outsourced to other frameworks, like for instance, messaging. I mean, we could have used a simple message oriented based architecture and developed a framework which could kind of like understand everything which is going on between different services, but we did not. I, I mean, definitely the original developers did not keep, even keep up with the whole uh, project. So, so we end up replacing a couple of components to kind of like simplify the lives of developers, our lives also. So Kevin, would you like to <clears throat> point out So, Sharon, I think uh, it's uh, right now it's relevant how our journey started. We started, we actually started, we did not have uh, any uh, any intention of having a different line of projects, having a different line of projects, which are uh, different line of projects. We intended to we were just starting out to get the project of uh, all the projects of Finraxi and upgraded to the latest version of or uh, rather Spring Boot 2 version. And we we thought that this might bring in some uh, uh, bring in some attention because uh, maybe uh, like and uh, we'll be able to use a lot of uh, a lot of uh, new features which are being brought into the ecosystem by Spring Boot 2. So we started out this way and in between we realized that even if we get this upgraded to uh, Spring Boot 2, this keeps on going. Why, why, why this uh, upgrade from Finra, uh, Spring Boot uh, the version with from, uh, with which it started, I think it's uh, one point four or something, and the one after a while they stop stopped upgrading. The developers stopped upgrading, I think. So even if we get this upgraded to Spring Boot two, this process again stops at some point, and the project again becomes obsolete. The Spring Boot uh, version, which is used by the project, again becomes uh, obsolete. That's when we found. J hipster and so basically uh, this is this is how we started we didn't have any uh, any intention to move away from the Finraxi and code base so I think we already talked about Cassandra how it became a pain for us to manage and so on 
and so we got rid of it because uh, using the components, the other two components we have uh, we have introduced. So here comes J Hipster. As you can, uh, J Hipster is a development platform quick, uh, to quickly uh, generate, develop, deploy, and modern. Uh, deploy modern web applications and microservice architectures. This is the description they have given themselves. And as you can see, this is a pretty popular project. And with the addition, why we came across JHipster is uh, with the idea that uh, with JHipster comes free upgradations. If we start out in Spring Boot to when the JHipster uh, uh, the jhipster has a pretty active community as you can see from the stats and uh, they they basically provide us with uh, since they uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, users they have a uh, like this project gets tested uh, by lots of people and so we have a strong strong uh, base to work upon and when jhipster upgrades from uh, one version uh, like whatever upgrades they are providing we get the same uh, we get the upgrades for free inside uh, jhipster projects using just a command you uh, type in jhipster upgrade and there it goes we have uh, upgraded our service we don't need to do anything else maybe they like uh, we'll have to manage a couple of couple of uh, errors which are going to come up or something like that. But still the bulk of the work is uh, will be managed by jhipster. This is how we started out with jhipster, like uh, why we wanted to introduce jhipster in, into the into the ecosystem. So, and uh, uh, can you go back? Sharon? So free uh, free upgrades are one thing, and this is how we started out. Another plus is that jhipster has uh, a lot of like uh, it's pretty popular. So we don't lock uh, one once we introduce jhipster into our ecosystem, our Findraxian ecosystem. It's not just like when uh, a developer. One advantage is that developer who are already using jhipster. They are immediately able to adapt to uh, uh, like contribute to our project Finraxian project. That is one plus. The another plus is that the the users who are not familiar with jhipster like they have a pretty good documentation to get started with, and when they are all uh, they they are already uh, like when they are already. Uh, familiar familiarize themselves with the concepts of jhipster and uh, after they have used it in project and contributed to the Findraxian project uh, Findraxian uh, our version then they don't go back with just the information of uh, uh, like uh, how it works out how projects go on in Findraxian they are able to use this information the, uh, this knowledge in some other projects which they might work on individually so there's another attraction this is one uh, one more attraction then jhipster also provides us, uh, us with the functionality of blueprints and we have actually used uh, we are actually uh, using jhipster generate blueprints to create a generator for our project this Finraxian, uh, our line of uh, projects we are talking about, we are actually going to use it for something. So that I'll, so we are I, basically. I, I, yeah. I would like to I would like to answer a couple of questions quickly before this. So um, there are like um, uh, Victor has actually said that JHipster is easy to implement but hard to do the maintenance. Uh, uh, maintenance is being done by JHipster themselves. Um, and a couple of people are saying that with JHipster you have to create generators for everyone. So we don't have to use generators. Generators are inbuilt there. They maintain their generators. Generators that what they just give you a boilerplate of an application in a specific language which kind of does the job 
what we were looking for to have this microservice for the microservices architecture um <clears throat> alexander is asking concerning j hipster isn't there a certain danger getting locked in um why that every use case can be covered no we're not saying that every use case should be so we have to understand j hipster is not about uh, i mean the fact is that we want to provide a easier uh, framework to start with definitely um j hipster sure. is not about can i uh, step in just for a moment sure. so uh, basically what we are doing is uh, one of the one of the bad implementation or uh, uh, what they did wrong in finraxian is that they actually made all the dependencies hard dependencies like one person who has to who just wants to improve the project or uh, who just wants to put in more domain value into the ecosystem he needs to he should actually go uh, like uh, get himself acquainted with all the projects which are which are hard dependencies but what we are doing is we are we are not introducing any hard dependencies we are just making we are we are just bringing in a standard way in which most of the services can be uh, developed easy in uh, in an easy way but we are not locking locking these developers or users into the seco system they can improve upon or uh, put in more uh, domain value the way they want we are not locking them into uh, to anything but the projects which uses this will be locked uh, definitely that doesn't mean that it will be very hard to get it migrated to something else or something like that we are just trying to bring in some uh defaults sorry so there is one more question asked by james that he is asking that how would you how would j hipster compare so j hipster is not comparable to camel uh it's not uh, it, this is not an orchestration service for microservices j hipster does what essentially for people who are not aware they could simply go to j hipster's website um i'll just post it here so j hipster is just simply Let's... uh Let let's say the... similar to finraxian template but a more uh, yeah uh, a project which but gives more... us presence with uh, as with more options dynamic options which could be cho- uh, chosen by the developer like he like, can choose yeah, like... with database to uh, use uh, uh, what kind of features he wants to uh, use for this pr- uh, particular project what kind of architecture he's uh he's trying to implement and so on yeah for sure like i mean it gives you a step based option and you know like you can use a different language also like for instance you don't want to use java you want you don't want to use kotlin you you want to use node js so you could just simply use node js so rather than getting fixed on on the idea that uh, it basically sets up sets sets up the whole initial uh, bo- uh, boilerplate for all of for the application and uh, but I, definitely the rest of the work needs to be done by the developer so but developer gets a fresh start he doesn't have to worry about a lot of things about you know like uh, from the from for the manual work upgrading the services this that which is kind of like a big issue right now with finraxian this is this is a personal experience i mean definitely a lot of people might not be feeling the same way which is this is just a, could be a subjective experience but this brings in a lot of integration also not only you know the aspect of uh, and uh, some people might say that this is a lock in with jhipster no definitely this is not a lock in because jhipster is a quite big vibrant community much much bigger than uh, i think finrac right now they have active like more than active 200 uh, 300 uh, main contributors Six, every month uh so and this is not only about j hipster actually j hipster does a very small role j hipster plays a very small role in finraxian or improvement how it just helps us to kind of automate couple of tasks which is to create a new boilerplate every time we want to create a different kind of language and we could add many blueprints which could like you know for different language different integrations and uh, different things you know which we want to do and it just plays a it just plays a small role uh you know it's it's basically very it doesn't really play the big role here we're just 
the idea of like for instance to create an application for ourselves so we thought about it the whether we should give an introduction we ended up in introducing a lot about j hipster eventually <laughs> we didn't want to have j hipster as a because for an instance if somebody wishes to use the different kind of generator they could simply use but the the whole idea remains the same that it could create and and it it does not really become difficult i think because uh, there are uh, i mean they manage the dependencies themselves and they test it pretty well and jhipster uh, they don't so jhipster doesn't do uh, publish the permissions the permission group to identity uh, it 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 handles it i think there's a question here which talks about how does the jhipster application publish uh see jhipster application doesn't really need to publish i think we we use this message oriented uh, i think uh, uh kevin could you uh, answer this question i think you can see this right how do you the application publish permission then permission groups to identity in front of cm one of the things we haven't put a lot of thought into like we haven't uh, gone deep into the security part of uh, finraxian which already exists but we plan to and what we uh, one of the things i have noticed is there are some like uh, the uh, there are some services which are introduced which which is not actually needed for example uh, an oauth to server by itself provides us with uh, not just with the ability to authenticate with the services but it it rather uh, gives us a way to authenticate and authorize so why why build a whole new framework which is harder for people to understand why not just use uh, uh, or to uh well, the existing concept framework, and right? concept, concepts and just uh, build maybe a thin thin we can we could uh, create a develop a thin layer on top of it uh, maybe that thin layer is also not needed but they have made the, in the finra inside the finraxian they have made it too complicated I, i guess the security framework also and in my opinion this is not actually needed we can handle the security uh, just with uh, using the help of oauth to server which is being provided by jhipster registry so uh, we can we uh, like uh, we'll take one more question from shankar ramakrishnan he says that one second he says that uh, i th i think he's talking about version he has actually, already so yeah he has already used it jhipster in some projects and uh, he came across some points where uh, it was difficult for them to recover some breaking changes what i'm saying is why why like when a project uses the ability to upgrade uh, our services and get move on with uh, the upgradation process and uh, those things easily for most of the part and uh, we we have to face uh, hardships for some time it doesn't mean that we should get rid of the whole project like uh, it doesn't uh, like there's no need to get rid of the whole project in a project which yes, doesn't do like uh, doesn't get upgraded at all if we get free upgrades for most of the time and then we have some breaking changes it's like it's normal we don't have silver bullets anywhere okay so kevin let's move on to the next component jhipster yeah. could uh, guys could could be researched about and i think i would like to answer meril here that uh, how does jhipster application so jhipster doesn't really so you have we have to understand we have to identify that jhipster is not an application jhipster just a generator java spring boot application is there or kotlin or different language applications are there these applications are it bunch of layout, uh, an application based yeah. for us so mm. how does it publish the permissions it could publish we have found out the way to publish information through a system bus which i think kevin could introduce in the next slide what is this about exon framework <laughs> again this uh, exon framework is one of the two uh, components we introduced one was jhipster now comes exon framework 
this is again where uh, we have talked about it this is another point where the fintrack c and developers reinvented the wheel axon framework has been around since 2010 and so it has a pretty matured code base code base and so uh, like why not just use uh, axon framework for providing the cqr side of uh, architecture uh, and not reinvent the wheel by us uh, like let's just use it and go on with it and one of the, like uh, axon framework it's moderately popular it has an active community and the same the say like it has a good documentation and enterprise support is also also available if we need it and the same points which i mentioned for the hipster like someone who uh, gets acquainted with our fintraxian improvement project he has to go through the documentation he has to learn about the axon framework uh, using with the help of the documentation again here we have an added advantage that we don't need to do the documentation by ourselves this is one of the places where fintrack cn uh, failed failed because they couldn't come up with a comprehensive documentation which helped the users with uh, whatever they wanted so like uh, to get acquainted with the project but here we are getting it for free because uh, it comes in with axon framework so we get acquainted using the documentation and when after getting acquainted again this knowledge could be used in some other project which he wants to this is another like uh, this is another attraction just like j hipster that uh, he gets acquainted with the project which is popular and so this could be applied somewhere else too not just uh, in our project so axon framework provides us with uh, secure facilities and uh, uh, there are plugins like uh, the back end side could be cassandra it could be kafka but we prefer axon server which is uh, specifically built for providing uh, event based even event sourcing but one of the cons of using axon server is uh, pros is a, a pro the uh, advantage is that it's it's built just for this purpose and so it uh, uh, like i can post in a link to that uh, i'll later on post a link to the uh, youtube video in which they have uh, this team has actually compared their uh, axon uh, servers performance with most of the other alternatives they provide and axon server perform pretty well compared to them so i think uh, so i would like to well, so the part of the slide here which is about testing i think cast in a series of pretty well um uh, part a core committer on fenrec 1.6 and when we uh, started talk and uh, we kind of like asked for his help that if he could want to kind of like try this whole uh, uh, test which we were doing um, while generating these applications so migrating these services from fenex and we wanted to see that how, would would we be able to migrate these services and how do we do that so first and for we had to replace a couple of things so we replaced those uh, packages which were part of the the the, the service existing services And then we introduce this exon frame and the exon frame does what it basically handles the interaction between services and then we use a uh, oauth 2 based uh, simple user um, authentication and authorization layer um, and each services could maintain permissions or whatever they wish to do in an isolated way. you could simply publish this information using the exon and all of these other services would get to know and uh, simply coming back to his own experience he found out that the whole approach was simple i mean he has five fenrex cn and he was able to successfully my deposit service uh, which is kind of available on on one of our repository and he did not face any issue you know while doing that i remember working with him on 
had to see and template while upgrading he couldn't figure out a couple of things i mean he did not know and he in, he found to be saying on record that he liked and he would suggest the other developers could all i mean which was very simple all he had to do is generate this application put on the exon layer on it and then you know try it out that's all i mean how, whatever to and the services were interacting with each other so <clears throat> the things which we kind of like achieved and uh, like with this uh, whole uh, testing or possible like where we went to and i definitely understand that we all have questions we can take the questions now after this that several services and one of them is accounting services and uh, the accounting services essentially migrated by kevin only um uh, we are yet to test these services with respect to our different ideas that we wanted to migrate services directly to 1.x i mean one of the one of the uh, committer or one of the uh, com- community member was speaking about this, what if we could migrate 1.x to see you know something like in microservices these services are an open api standard it generates swagga based documentation and they have identity service we couldn't migrate the ui uh, it's we because uh, meril i think what we wanted to do is that we wanted to set, first of all achieve the results of the api which we achieved and we realized that there is another set of team who was working on the user interface and um, we could just simply plug with that because we realized that we had the power to kind of like simply generate these applications so easily that we could just simply have those apis same level of apis or different level of apis available to i mean to the existing user interface the most important thing which we wanted to do is that we wanted to support different kind of services we wanted to see that like uh, kevin has actually implemented uh, accounting on a, on a database called neo4j which is a relational database i mean graph based database and like we wanted to run different kind of supports for different kind of services like for instance your service want to use elastic search why do you want to use postgres you don't want to use postgres don't use it all you have to do is publish this information we removed couple of existing services including provisioner i think we made it automatic that the services would kind of like let know each other that, okay we are running right now through a just centralized registry and the centralized registry is kind of like publish this information all of the required information which is like, like you know needed and the most important achievement here is the different language support so um you could just have different languages you know like that's the whole idea of microservices for instance if you're comfortable in using any other language all you have to do is connect with our service this single service you don't have to learn something new you don't have to like figure out different uh, packages so this is where we possibly see the inclusion of these services that it could be read branded as fincen 3 or like extended on top of we would like to work with the community to kind of like work with the existing services and i think it should be entirely dependent on the idea that what community wants to have uh, you know if they want to have this as an extension and um, if they want to have this as a part of the core that would be great if not then we could provide this as an extension on a possible uh, exploration of the options so questions here we would like to answer um um we would like yeah so ui already contains a gateway yeah so i think we don't need a gateway which we don't really need a gateway at this point of time i think this is something which i was discussing with kevin also so if so yeah we actually just last note which i would like to share is that we've actually uh, removed a lot of dependencies hardcore dependencies which um, like for instance people would ask where is the you know provisioner where is the you know this uh, um, other packages like core 10 i mean i remember having looking at these 10 packages which is like anubis rhythm and all these services we no longer need them i mean because we've just simplified everything and that's the whole case so kevin would you like to add something in the end
just like uh, just like sharon told we are trying to we are just trying to give power over over to the developers and uh, improve their experience we are minimizing the set of uh, services which are which were hard dependencies for example i told you in the beginning i was not able to run uh, a basic setup which is mentioned in the documentation finraxian documentation on my uh, laptop which had uh, adequate uh, memory and so i was not like this already gets in the way of development so what we are doing is the services could be developed in in isolation with the other services just like uh, what microservice architecture proper microservice architecture would like us to do all we need to do like all need all we need to have if if we are using even the axon framework part the jhipster part everything is optional it just like we have introduced those those components in order to simplify it for the developer if one developer decides to move away from these defaults and do things his own way he could actually do it by himself uh, in his own way and plug it into our ecosystem which was pretty difficult in the finraxian ecosystem because of the uh, existence of uh, hard dependencies like uh, this one uh, anubis and so on and we got, uh, in short like um, sharans sharans uh, already mentioned we got components or projects just by doing nothing like they were all provided already provided by spring boot or some of the projects which are included like uh, the jhipster project in finrax cn also there was a project it's a uh, finrax cn identity and it already had an o2 server inside it but the uh, provisioner was registering the clients o2 clients for nothing like it was registering the clients o2 clients while uh, and it was just use uh, it one of the purpose was to register o2 clients another purpose was to uh, inform inform other services that uh, a new tenant has been created and the services provision themselves which is no longer needed in our setup so we got rid of it and uh, it's a lot to discuss in uh, discuss like this we'll bring in more documentation which uh, which makes it easier for people to uh, get acquainted more uh, for now i think this uh, we'll take questions right now basically what we are doing is we made it uh, we brought in a lot of defaults which uh, helps mm -hmm. the developers and uh, made them optional yeah like that's the whole idea because that can bring a lot of contribution back towards the project i mean the whole idea is that we want to bring back the contribution to the original promise i mean which we started out that it should be agile it should be ephemeral and it should be able to deliver these performance things also so plus keeping in mind that we wanted to keep this project distributed in nature i mean uh, like so um, you know so this is a possible exploration as james also suggested to us that it's not the i mean there is no such definitive guide to the un universe i mean there is no definitive guide to this whole technical approach also it's just that this is a possible exploration which we set out on and we wanted to give back this feedback to the community that there this work which we spent a lot of time on like 2 3 months i remember because we wanted to figure out that hey is there another possible way for us to uh, you know to determine um um that there exists a different uh, uh, opinion or view or aspect to the whole